1084 back at you with some games usually you guys read the headline i'm sure or at least the uh, title of the game but if you didn't let's talk about what we're going to be playing today now before we get into it i wanted to talk about something i saw it was a troll by kfc the gaming console they trolled on twitter the other day uh it was a small tiny picture because that's all i can use because you know you know pictures may be subject to uh, copyright so i did a google search here of the KF console, but you can find it on Twitter um, if you were interested. The video was actually hilarious, and they had a chicken roaster in it. I mean, I was set. I mean, if it was going to play everything as they boasted, full uh, 4K, 120 FPS, as a disk drive, why not? And a chicken roaster. I mean, how the heck could anyone not love that? Uh, but sad day, KFC isn't releasing a game console to complete, compete with Sony's PS5. Sad. They trolled uh, Sony and Microsoft on social media with their own console reveal, an article here by on CNET. But what we are going to play today is one that came out a little bit ago. I love you, Colonel Sanders. Uh, they did release this game uh, back in September of 19, 2019, and uh, I didn't play it at the time. I think I got it because it's free. I think it's free. In fact, I could probably check Steam. I'll check Steam before we started. I think it's still free. Um, but... Uh, it released to PC, of course, and uh, finger looking fun. Uh, wait, hold on. Um, we're going to play this game. I was watching a video based on the KFC, KFC console where they were talking about it, and then uh, I saw the Twitter video for it. So I got kind of, I got kind of stoked to, uh, to go back and maybe try out this uh, KFC game. And uh, I think, uh, let's see, yeah, I Love You, Colonel Sanders is free on Steam. If you've got a PC and you want to try it out, I just checked. You can, if you would like to. Uh, but I've saved this one for a long time. I believe it's anime-like, um, so we've got that going for us. I think it's a dating sim, if I'm not mistaken. And I think you can court. Yikes. I get that KFC logo in there. I think you can court the car. I'm not sure. Whoa! Whoa! Blowing out the eardrums. We have to make a huge audio adjustment. Intro. All right, so uh, hopefully, if I didn't forget, hopefully, if I didn't forget, I will have adjusted the audio. Oh, you guys, I'm I'm doing this for you guys. Hopefully, if I didn't forget, I'll have adjusted the audio in in the editing phase so we won't have to worry about that let's get this f sfx let's all let's keep it like right about there i, I want you guys to, be able to hear it for sure uh new game haven't tried it yet so we definitely need a new one tell us your name dano 84 that seems like it'll be right look it's it's <laughs> Is making me hungry and I just watched food wars recently too so this is like right up my well up to season two I need to watch season three of food wars you sleep softly as the morning Sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment sounds about right oh I just have to click here the world is peaceful and serene you could stay in the moment forever <laughs> Or you can wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Game over already. You might not be cut out for this. <laughs> well, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next time, and bye for now. Just kidding. We're not going to end it that way. Let's try that again. Off to a great start. I did not know that was going to happen.
That alarm clock was just too... After, after the intro music blew me away, that alarm clock was just way too screechy for me. All right, so we've got here... All right. Let's get up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. I honestly didn't know this was a cooking game, or, like, I don't know what I thought it was going to be as far as, like, what you'd be doing. I knew that there's a chance to court, I think, Colonel Sanders or something like that, and I know it's kind of anime looking. Um, but I didn't realize it was a cooking game, so it is kind of funny that I did just finish Food Wars, the end of season two. And if I'm going to go to cooking school, this is perfect. Your mind begins to wander, because I love Food Wars. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination get away from you. You need to take this seriously, or you allow yourself to daydream a bit. Let's, uh, can we daydream a bit? It's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Dude, KFC biscuits are the shit, if you didn't already know that. Yikes, you're in such a hurry, and this is not sponsored by KFC. Uh, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any donor before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. I like uh, I like the way this looks so far. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Since she's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Dano84. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot of nervous. What the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. She looks so sad with her crying there. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> but with University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. That's a, that's a legit fear. A sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Let's give her a pep talk. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? That lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and the other card featuring that handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. And in no time we'll be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk up Miriam, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Always got to have the highlights. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I, uh, I can't believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil. But you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. She's like Meat Meat. Or no, she's like um, the other gal, Miss Nakamori, with the, with the god tongue on Food Wars. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Daniel 84 shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, <laughs> has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Ahem, Van Van? You rang rang? Look at this guy. You've never been sure what their arrangement is but as long as you've known them Ashley and Van Van have just been just as close as you and Miriam but substantially more devious they're my arch rivals like there yeah, that's what they are I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students yeah get them I know right you'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now 
or maybe hire us on as professors, you amateur could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Aw, let's go, Miriam. Shh, see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. He just farted. He just, he just had a fart joke. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Dano84. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? Uh, I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. I didn't know we were going to be instructed by a pooch. Sprinkles. Oh, and he's even got a little... I like that. He's got a little uh, platform there to sit on. Whoop. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of USC AL. Oh, thank goodness, I thought I was going to say University of Cooking. I already forgot it. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly, someone close the window. And then, he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him, it's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harlan... Colonel Sanders interrupted Sprinkle. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Harlan, please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hush murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of decks, desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're, to and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open the window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates over entirely. Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class, and what is it with the really weird insults? Besides, when Dan 84 sweats, it's not gross, it's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Colonel Sanders, Colonel Sanders, the beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hands outstretched. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fire. Please use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. What the heck is going on here? Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Take the handkerchief. You outstretch your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful you hesitate to press to your face, but when you do, the feeling is trans transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Professor T Dog steps in to settle the class down and get some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, there might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the Brougham cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Ugh, dog. <laughs> Dog's evil there. Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Nice. I wasn't going to read the... The class burst into laughter. 
Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Uh oh. Hmm. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? A beef treat, a rubber ball, or a chicken snack? Uh, let's go with a chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of, wet, of warm doggy drool. So I didn't put on any deodorant, and I'm covered in doggy drool now. You see, the other students eyeing your jealousy but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Exactly. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Dano, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me if you're interested. Two good options, but what will you choose? Um, I'm going to go sit by my best friend. You move to take a seat by Miriam. I'm so glad you have me here to support me through the class. Of course, you're my best friend. Where, Who else would I sit by? <laughs> the Colonel. He has such a magnetic personality and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in Spencer. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say... So you say, but now that Miriam mentions it, the Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely, that's right. Forest is to a tree as chicken is to feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as for love and not too much salt. Camel meat, a pancake that looks like a silly face. I'm gonna go with that. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? He's a talking dog that teaches at corner school. He is the best boy. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that one. Your total score is lit at five out of five. Nailed it. Did you cheat? You look that up. You look up to see a Colonel Sanders and watching you tell your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Thanks, Colonel. I'm diggity, Dan, ready for you. just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Yes. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of, our, of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. It's contents glimmer in the light. It's just like on Food Wars when the, when the smell. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crisp golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. By the way, if I make anyone hungry watching this, I apologize. I'm also getting hungry. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. 
By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that, all I'll say about that. Unless you Google it, sure. What, you think we want your stupid recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what zinger Ashley has prepared to follow, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with his cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of, his, out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Let's see. Focus your mind and meditate on the moment. Try to identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. Let's try to identify the flavors. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt, maybe? Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe. But there's something else. Something dark and something spicy. You dig deeper. Deeper. Yes, even deeper still, until you find it. Could it be... He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with the colonel. Okay, I approach him. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Huh, how bold of you to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use blank. <laughs> it's something my great-grandmother taught me. Blank? Wow, you've never guessed that? You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And blank definitely is a flavor you tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe, but you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think, of, I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Um. Uh. Let's be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Dano84. I'm sure you'll be a big success. <clears throat> I know we only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the... Wow, that's an awesome looking kitchen. That's like a uh, one of those TV show kitchens. Step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? 
you're not gonna blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lessons, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Dan084, I'll prepare our station. Sorry, Miriam. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick four. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. What? Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Hmm, I thought I was going to get to be my best friend's partner because I was going to be a good best friend. She said Pop was cute, but I think Clank might be more... Let's go with Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. <laughs> it's not entirely sure if Pop has any idea what the point of school is even at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. There's the dogs barking in the background. Tissue, I hardly knew you. Ha 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 ha. Clank judders and panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time for you to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lessons, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Um, steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Or your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I feel like the Colonel would be really good at mashed potatoes and gravy because I love their mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we can make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a, a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking a perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are pretty getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call for me? Uh, no. Jeez, Ban Ban. While I'm over here crushing Dano84's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? I like this random music that just kicked in. Colonel Sanders returns, arm full of peeled potato. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no, it looks like Dan 84 was struggling, so we offered to give him a hand. You know how it is, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up on my level. Ha, doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Let's see. Turn to Colonel, hunk of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your best, your forever bestie who always has your back. I guess we'll try to turn to the Colonel. I'm here to learn to express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Dano84 as my partner for that activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Dano84's natural talent or their loyalty. By def being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. 
You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy texture mix. The music's throwing me off. Into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. It does look awesome. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spore full up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he will he ever be able to cook something without with so much love and integrity? My goodness, reading. Hold on arm right there, Dano84. We do not waste food in the Brome cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'll both be better be prepared for eat it wherever it lands. Can I has potatoes face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky sweet, my silky salt water sauce. Plate it on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. This ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you who will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes on Van Van and swabs a bite of his signature dish right off his plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! Ah, oh, it was quick that he, uh, died. Everyone step back, don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest is gone. You notice the tip of tentacle being slurped up in Pop Pop's mouth. Or in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his obvious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against the poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Uh, <laughs> ghost of student. I like that. Um, hello, I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all this nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. All right. So, for now, let's go ahead and stop this story here. I have a feeling this is going to be a short game. I don't know. Uh, but we'll go ahead and stop this video here with the lovely music in the background. So, if you liked it, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if not, I'll see you more... Well, if, if you didn't like it, then I probably won't see you. But if you did, then I'll see you uh, next time as we play more I Love You, Colonel Sanders. Whoa! Whoa! Getting down with them songs from Hunter Hunter, I believe. I think. I think I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. I think I believe, I believe. I watched way too many, uh, way too much anime at all at once. All at once. My headphones are freaking loud. I am freaking loud. Let's do this. Let's do this.